so yeah, so I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, kind of workflows, workflows in Pegasus, and just kind of workflows in general today. Um, so this word workflow um, is used a lot um, nowadays. So this can mean a lot of different things, and it comes up in a lot of different places. So some people might refer to just kind of their, um, you know, your bash script that has a few different programs that are running in it as their workflow. But a lot of things too are now getting to even more uh, custom infrastructure. You might have databases set up like we just saw in uh, things like Spin. Those might go to web interfaces and all of that is interconnected in a workflow that this data goes through. Um, and some of the things that NERSC helps our users support are these workflow tools and workflow engines. Um, so a couple of examples are uh, like SnakeMake, you might've heard of, you can do Parallel, Fireworks, um, and we also have many more. And one of the ones I'm gonna be talking about today uh, is Pegasus. Pegasus is a, a different type of workflow manager, but um, kind of the goals in general of what we're talking about when we're trying to, to have workflow managers is things like automation. So data comes in, we want the workflow manager to be able to pick it up and start computing on that. And especially like reproducibility and sharing this workflow with other people. So you, you at some point might need to hand this workflow over to a new person who's going to manage it. And you want something that's going to be easy to be moved over to them. that They're able to pick up and start using and running and maybe even run on different systems. Um, there's also going to be a lot of moving parts. So being able to uh, track data through those pipelines, um, as well as being able to use our resources more efficiently. So maybe you have a lot of really tiny jobs that you can pack into a larger job using one of these workflow managers. Um, and really at the end of the day, this is just taking some of your work out of your work. So putting in a little bit of effort, using a workflow tool, and then hopefully not having to put as much effort in because you're gonna let some of these systems uh, do most of this effort. So I'll talk a little bit about um, the Pegasus workflow manager. So this is a workflow manager. Um, it defines its workflows in a couple different YAML files. Um, so the replicas, sites, transforms, and workflow. Um, and I'll go into a little bit about that um, and show there's a couple different APIs that you can use to build up these YAML files. So you can either build them up yourself or probably the easiest way is to use one of these APIs. Um, and so I'm gonna be showing off the Python API. And then we also have an example of this uh, on the day-to-day -day GitHub page um, that I have working for Perlmutter. So there's gonna be a little bit more, little information here, and then some more information on the actual uh, GitHub page that'll have install instructions and some instructions on running it. Um, so the Pegasus Workflow Manager um, has some different uh, APIs in order to plan out a DAG. So that DAG is a directed analytic graph. Um, and it's a graph that represents the work that can be done. So we have our nodes here. So in this case, we have something where we're gonna split a file and then do some word counts on those split files. And so each one of those nodes is gonna be some kind of executable that we're gonna run. Um, and then each one of these edges shows both the data flow and the dependencies. So we see that we need to be able to run the split operation first in order to go on to these word counts. Um, all of this is run using the HD Condor scheduler. Um, and so it, you, it actually, Pegasus will take your uh, representation and turn that into a DAG that uh, the HD Condor scheduler understands. Um, and it will use that scheduler to actually execute everything. Um, and so that scheduler will be the one executing and managing all of the workflow. Um, so before we start making our workflow, there's a couple of things that we wanna consider when we're building this. So one of them is the what executables, what parts are we going to wanna run? Um, maybe are these parts in a container as well? Should we say that they're in a container? Do we need to, to define that somewhere? Um, a lot of things too are gonna to be, what data do we have? What are our inputs going to be? What are our outputs gonna be? And then on top of that, what are those dependencies in there? So what outputs need to go to the next task? Um, and how are all of those parts connected? And so one of the parts of this, um, the transforms part, is a way of defining what our executables are. 
Um, so here's part of the Python API um, showing a function that's going to create this transform catalog. So we make our transform catalog object, and then we can add transforms to this. So the way that Pegasus defines its executables or the way that data is going to come into something and then be transformed into something else is like this. So we can see that we're, we can tell it what site we want to execute on. We can tell it what the executable is. And then we add all of these to a list um, that then gets put into this YAML file of transforms. So uh, the next thing that we might want to go and do is define data. Um, so this is what we call the replicas. So the replica here is going to be some test CSV that we're going to split up. And we want to go and say where that, that is. So this is a local file. It's on the file system somewhere. Um, and say that it's in the input directory at the moment. Um, all of our output data can actually be uh, put in as when, when we go on to the next step, we'll actually go and register that as replicas independently in a different step. Um, so here's where we actually start building up the workflow. Um, so in this workflow, we're going to go and have that, that file. We define that we have a file that we need as input. Um, we can define that we want to split this into four different parts um, and then give the arguments then to our command. So we have this job, we've called it the same name that we call our executable. We can add things like arguments, add things like inputs, and then we can add that job into the workflow. Then we can also go um, and add different commands in this too. So now we have our uh, top layer, which is our split. And now all of those are going to come into these different word counts. And so we see that by going um, and seeing this word count job now has to take in the input of one of these parts that we've created from the step before. So the outputs from the split are coming into the inputs of our word count. Um, and again, we can go and catch things like this is actually going to catch the standard out and then take that standard out and save that as a new replica. So that's going to save that as a piece of data that we also want to collect. And again, we can go and save this as a job that we want to go um, and add onto our workflow. So it's a pretty simple way to see how you can programmatically build up a workflow. Um, this is also a really good way to, to show maybe this is a very simple workflow here, but you could see how you could extend this as well, especially with it being a Python API. Maybe you have a directory that has files that are constantly updating. This workflow could look in the directory, know that it needs to do the same task on these, um, depending on what directory it's in, and you could have this build the workflow based on uh, files and directories or, or other things. So again, we have this Python file now that we can go and generate our workflow with, and that'll create all of those, those YAML files. Again, the replicas is going to have that storage and our data defined in it. Um, the transforms will have all of our executables and parameters, and then we'll have the workflows file, uh, which will actually define the workflows. I kind of kept, skipped over the site at the moment. The site is very specific to the site that we're going to be on. Um, so in this case, it'll be Perlmutter. And I actually have a site one that works on Perlmutter that's in the uh, GitHub page at the moment. Um, that should be easy enough to uh, modify itself without going through the uh, Python API. So I talked a little bit about Condor. Um, so Condor is a different scheduler than Slurm. Um, and so we're going to actually have to have to set that up in order to use this system. Um, and the way that we're going to set that up is by using uh, scron tab to do a long running workflow job. So this is a new feature that's part of Perlmutter to, to enable some long running workflow jobs. And so we'll actually go and set up the scheduler before we start any of our jobs. Um, and so the scheduler is actually built to do a lot of high throughput workloads. So the idea is that you have lots of really small jobs that can go through pretty quickly that might bog down a, a system like uh, Slurm. Um, and a lot of times these are going to be jobs that have less than a node worth of, of compute power that they need. So you're able to go and pack a lot more jobs onto a single node 
And then this scheduler understands a little bit better how to pack those jobs efficiently onto those nodes. Um, and so, yeah, we're going to use this to go and run uh, Pegasus, and Pegasus will use this to run the workflows. So down at the bottom here is just a example of starting up and running a scron tab on um, Perlmutter. So this will go and run. Uh, it says every 10 minutes, but really what happens is that it will just start every 10 minutes, but scron tab is smart enough that once one of these jobs is running, it won't run until that job has finished because it's using Slurm in the back end to manage that. So this will just start up 10 minutes, and then I have this running for 30 days in the uh, workflow QoS. So it finishes what it's doing, it'll end, and then it'll start again 10 minutes later? Yeah, yeah. So for, for this one, it's 30 days. So every 30 days, it would stop and then start up in 10 minutes. So essentially, infinitely running. But but yes, you could set up different... Oh, yeah, so you could set up different uh, scron tabs depending on what you want to do. So yeah, so once you have... Um, so once the scron tab goes through, you're... Uh, scheduler starts running. Um, you can go and use uh, the Condor status command to see and make sure that everything's running. Once we see that all the pieces are running, we can see the most important one here is going to be the scheduler. We have our scheduler running. We've started up that scheduler and it's ready to go and accept the work that we're going to have. And then we can do a Pegasus plan submit. So Pegasus plan will take all of those um, take all those YAML files that it sees, and it will go and plan through and compute the DAG that needs to happen, write out some files. And you can see here, it's writing out some files for uh, Condor to go and use, to go and execute all of this work. Um, once your thing starts running, you can go and look at the how things have progressed, looking at this, uh, um, Pegasus Analyzer or Pegasus Status is another command too. Both of them will show you the progress of the jobs, how they're going through. So you have the total number of jobs and that like the number of succeeded, failed, um, things like that. So you can see here too, this is the same workflow that I had been using, right? So we should probably have five jobs, but you actually see that we have nine jobs here. So something that Pegasus is also doing is doing staging in in cleanup for a lot of your jobs. So this would be helpful as well. It does a lot of checking for you to make sure that a file is in the right place before it starts maybe executing a larger uh, S batch that might use up some of your allocation. So it's gonna do a lot of checks for you before actually computing the parts of your workflow that you want. So we can also check both Condor's queue to see that uh, things are going through its queue and you can check on uh, the Slurm queue as well to see that, like I said, this one has, um, it's waiting for the stage in to, to happen. So it's staging in some files, making sure that things are ready before it actually starts up the jobs. And I have just a tiny demo. Let's see, does that work? Great. So yeah, this was right after I had submitted. You can see that it has this split that's going to run and go through. So something I didn't say as well, Pegasus actually can go and submit jobs to the Slurm scheduler for you. So there's a few things in the site configuration that tell Pegasus how it should go and make an sbatch command for each one of the jobs. Um, and you can actually specify for each one of your transforms of what you want to happen for that transform. So that includes being able to add special parameters for how much memory, how much CPU, uh, even how many nodes you might want if it's an MPI job. And so let's let this go. I'll skip ahead a bit because I can go. That's about here. Um, so it takes a little while. It's going, uh, Condor is going through and making sure that everything's correct and ready. And then you can see here, it's now submitted all of these word count jobs, just waiting on Slurm to, to go through. And you can also see that this cleanup job is also in the queue as well. So once these other jobs go through, it will clean up directories and make sure that everything is um, ready.
So here you can see it picked up all the jobs in Slurm, runs the cleanup, and then everything's done. Um, so again, this is just an example of one of the workflow tools that we can use uh, in order to help to go and make sure that your work is, is getting done, to make sure that everything's going through properly. Um, so it's just one of many workflow tools, and we have lots more workflow tools uh, on the docs, on docs.nurse.gov. Um, so please take advantage of those docs to figure out maybe what workflow tool might work for you, what workflow tool might not. Um, and there are always going to be advantages and disadvantages of each of these workflow tools. Um, so it might be good to read up on which one might fit your needs the best. Um, so I think that's it. So any questions? Yeah, I, I was just curious, you talking about the different workflows. What's the kind of the main reason why Pegasus? Is it like if you have a pre-existing platform set up, it works really nicely, or is it like, oh, it's just really good for multiple jobs? And yeah. <clears throat> so I think for Pegasus, one of the advantages is that um, a lot of people might have a Pegasus workflow already ready. And so this is a way that it, those people can also just start using uh, this. Um, but again, too, I think that one of the advantages as well is that because you can specify types of jobs that you want, you can have a mix between smaller jobs that need to fit on, on that can fit onto one node, plus then maybe an MPI job that comes after that. So now you can have some staging in, uh, a lot of small jobs, and then goes on to MPI jobs, and then maybe some stage out jobs. So it can kind of handle the, the work between the two of those. Uh, so we have a question from Stephen Bailey. You maybe already started to answer this, but I wanted to ask about how well it played with MPI, and in particular, different jobs needing different levels of parallelism, and how you, is Pegasus a good tool for specifying that, or is that just not the thing it does? Yeah, so on the back end, what it's going to do is it's just going to write an SBatch script for you for the parts that need MPI. Um, so really, Pegasus is just going to go and figure out what steps need to go in what places, and also figure out what jobs need to go where in those places. And then, then it will just submit those jobs via SBatch. Um, so it should be the same performance the same way as it would be with um, your regular job guy, but now it'll just be handled by the workflow manager. Um, if, if it's not getting too much in the weeds, could you show one of those YAML files and show where you would specify that, you know, this thing needs 10 nodes and this other one needs one node? Or if that's too much in the weeds, we can follow up later. You can go to the site and I'll just show you kind of in general what the site config looks like. Um, so right, so here, it's just, you kind of give it just arguments, right? So these are similar arguments that you'd see in SBatch. And then I was just doing really small jobs, really low run times, but you would just give it a, a number of nodes here. Um, but that and applies that, to all jobs, doesn't it? Not like this step in the graph needs 10 nodes and this other step needs one core? Sure. So so what I would do if I was doing that is I would make in my sites configuration, I would make a like small job and a big job or like. Uh, okay. And you can say this one needs to go to this site. Like my okay. MPI now needs to go to my one that has multiple nodes with it. And then my stage in might only need a shared node for, for a minute or two. So that would be the way I think that you would handle um, kind of these 